Tosika calls me after dinner. I guess there wasn't as much damage as we thought there would be at school. It must be because of the it must be because the one who set up the boundary field, Ryder, died quickly. I hear the students that were in the same classroom as Ryder need to stay in the hospital for a long time, but most students just have anemia. School's not going to close down and we'll be having classes like normal tomorrow. Yeah, it's no big deal, they'll just have anemia just like Shiki. Oh, then again, that's, uh, chronic anemia. Shiro, what did Rin say? She said school's going on as normal, so we'll go to school tomorrow and look for Castor's master. I see. So nobody in that building suffered seriously. Except for a few. Oh, I think Fujine is not home because she's busy with a staff meeting or something. Yeah, we have to just discuss that weird ass, uh, that that weird con uh, situation where all the students somehow got, you know, are in critical condition. You know, I'm pretty sure they don't even know what the fuck happened to them. You know, it's just like, oh, there was a there was a boundary field, and, that, and uh, you were affected by it, and your life was being drained out of your body, and now you have, you know. Pretty much have either anemia or you're just in general critical condition. That is good. Knowing Taiga, I'm sure she would be sitting at the breakfast table tomorrow like nothing had happened. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, that's a relief for me as well. Well, since her energy is extraordinary, I stopped worrying about her when I heard everyone's alright. Then sure, continuing that conversation from earlier. She leans over the table with a serious face. Uh, so you haven't given up yet? Of course not. I will sleep in your room so we won't repeat last night's mistake. There's nothing for you to complain about, right? I wouldn't be complaining. I do have complaints. Having Saber sleep in the same room as me is like telling me to die. What? How? God damn the, the weird comparisons with Shiro, they just never stop. Shiro, first of all, it is your fault for being affected by such a long-range hypnotism. It's your fault for being inexperienced, Shiro. I cannot, take, I cannot protect you from Caster's magic, so it is natural for me to at least stay in the same room. Magic can be sensed the closer I am to it. If Caster is to go after you, I must step cl I must sleep closer to you. Well, that is a very sound argument, but I think that Caster won't use the same strategy since she failed once. I think so, but if I say that to Saber right now. Amai! <laughs> You are too optimistic. You were deceived by a heretic like Castor and insulted by someone with a twisted personality like Archer because you think like that. I bet you would object like that. Are you listening to me, Shiro? I will not listen to excuses such as me being a woman. I will be sleeping in your room starting tonight, so please do not run away to the shed, okay? Saber glares at me and makes her declaration. Ugh. So she even anticipated that I was going to run away to the shed. Yeah, because that's what you always do. I'll hold my ground and try to get her to agree on a compromise. Alright, I'll have you sleep near me. So you finally accepted, huh? Yes, that is a natural choice for our master. But not in the same room. You know there's an empty room next to mine, right? The one on the other side of the sliding screen? Yes, I know, but what about it? Shiro, you're never going to get any pussy acting like this. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> um, the place, um, that place should be good enough to protect me while I'm asleep, right? No, first of all, the enemy won't come if the enemy won't come in if we're sleeping in the same room. I don't think the enemy would care. So you should stand by in the next room so that you can surprise attack the enemy when they come for me. Oh, I think this sounds pretty logical. 
That's fine, right, Saber? Honestly, I don't know about two people sleeping in that small room. We can't physically fit. I think it's bad for a servant to be at the cause of her master's lack of sleep. Mm. You're rather witty tonight, Shiro. I understand. It sounds like an excuse to me, but I am fine with that. I will compromise on that plan. Phew. Good. Man, being a master is hard enough. If I sleep in the same room as Saber on top of that, I bet my brain will overheat. Not only that, not only that will overheat. And in the chaotic day, and the chaotic day comes to an end. It's becoming more like a habit now as I train with Saber until 11 and spend an hour doing my routine in the shed. I get back to my room when the date changes. I hear Saber breathing from the next room. My heart jumps at that, but I try to calm down as I get into my futon. I close my eyes, shake off any wicked thoughts, and tell myself to go to sleep as fast as I can. That's right, don't don't let those pervy thoughts get to you, Shiro. Man, I can't sleep that easily. I try not to be conscious of Saber and recall what happened today. The Red School. The boundary field of blood that would have created lots of victims if we hadn't stopped it. That causes my restless mind to stop. The students on the floor of that red classroom. That she was desperately bearing it all. Right around the floor and the students that looked like they were dead. Oh, I remember now. At that instant, I figured out the deep part of her. I'll kill you the next time we meet. Because we're enemies, right? She acted as a magus, but she never crossed the final line. She's firm, strong-willed, and magnificent, but she's outrageously good-natured. The difference must be her burden. How clumsy of her. The more she tries to act as a magus, the more she kills her true self as Tosuka Rin. Oh, wait. I can't be talking about other people. I sigh and pull the blanket over my head. <sighs> well, I guess there's something wrong with me. Yeah, there definitely is. For thinking that I want to be a support for such a perfect girl. Interval level one. Whatever that means. I see a dream. I see a memory that I cannot reach through a small connected circuit. For what did he fight, and for what did he keep running? He never told anyone about his motives. Everyone around him saw him as either obstinate or a weird person. And on top of it all, he didn't talk much, so I bet he was thought to be ruthless. His intentions were not known. At the very least, nobody knew about them. He never talked about his intentions, even after he became a hero and was burdened with many things. That's why he appeared suspicious to the people around him. It's because nobody knew his intentions. Or nobody knows his intentions. He conveniently saves people in danger, but nobody knows why he's doing what he does. See, it's inevitable that people would feel uneasy about him. He should have had a reason. Greed, pride, selfishness, lust, vengeance, or devotion. Simple reasons like those, which are easy to understand. If he had any of them, such an end should not have awaited him. His reward for success was always betrayal. The things he picked up sifted through his fingers like grains of salt. He got used to it. He got used to it like an idiot. From the very beginning, his reward was... Not what he received from the people he saved, but the pure action of saving someone. The repetition of it makes me so mad that I want to punch him, and it also makes me want to cry. The reason he was called a hero. His intention was never revealed to anyone. Nobody around him knew, and he, the only one who had to know, eventually forgot about it himself. That is why I shed tears in spite of myself. To the miracle, that in the long, long path between the start and the goal, where what is right or wrong is not definite. He never strayed from his original goal. And the end comes. An excellent savior is only trouble for everyone except the ones he saves. He knew his limits and the vastness of the world. He accepts what can be saved and what cannot be saved. That is why he at least wanted people within his sight to be happy. 
Many scorned it as hypocrisy and as blind idealism. There are more enemies than allies, and he died at their hands. So this is not a place in this world. This place is the end of him. The illusion that he saw on the verge of his death, the only pride he had within himself. The hero that used the scenery as his weapon falls to his own darkness in the end. The hill of swords that he reached. His battle ends atop of this hill, surrounded by rusted steel without a wielder. He is still alone, but he thinks there is nothing to regret if he was able to save everyone that appeared within his sight. And he smiles in satisfaction, lets go of the sword, and crumples down. That's why he never had any regrets. His objective was already accomplished long ago. From the start, he ran with his utmost effort, not for himself, but for the strangers who shouldn't have meant anything to him. <sighs> I rub my drowsy eyes and get up. It's 5.30 in the morning. I don't feel sleepy, so I guess I was able to sleep well last night in spite of everything. <sighs> Man, I guess I'm pretty simple-minded. I grumble while getting out of the futon and change into my uniform. I can hear faint breathing if I strain my ears. I feel Saber's presence on the other side of the sliding door. Ugh. The instant I wonder what she looks like when she's sleeping, my head blows up. <laughs> breakfast! I'll go make breakfast. <laughs> good idea. That's good, that's good. I shake the indecent thought out of my head and go out of my room quickly. The breakfast table. My expectation that it would be a quiet breakfast considering what happened yesterday. <laughs> and what do you think the doctor said after that? He said, you have an extraordinarily healthy body, so why don't you donate some blood while you're here? Man, I'm a patient too. I'm not going to such a place ever again is totally destroyed by Fujine, who is more energetic than usual. I didn't think that was possible. In terms of horse racing, this development is the dark horse, but something tells me this might have been the likely outcome. Oh, I want more miso soup. Can you leave the onions out? Alright, so what happened after that? I heard all the students were taken to the hospital, so did they all regain their consciousness? Yeah, most people should have recovered yesterday. The ones on the fourth floor, the first year seemed like they were just sleeping, and some second years lost their memory of the incident. Third years, um, they weren't as bad on the as the ones on the second floor, but the ones on the first floor? Fujine looks down as though it's difficult for her to talk about it. I feel bad. Fujine has gone to all the hospitals in town. She has just seen what kind of conditions the students on the first floor classrooms were in. I'm sorry, I'll stop talking about this. So the school's starting as usual? The first years had their faces melted. I think that's pretty much what happens. Yep, but since the third years can start coming to school voluntarily soon, they said people who are not feeling too well don't need to come to school. I bet most of them won't come today. I see. Then it'll mostly be first and second years coming to school today. No, Fujine. Hey, Fujine, who in our school is connected with the Ryudo Temple? I thought you knew that, Shiro. Wouldn't that be Isekun? He is the successor of the temple, right? Yeah, no. Forget about what I just asked. I put my bowl down while I look up at the ceiling. The only one connected to the Ryudo Temple at our school is Ise. But it's too soon to decide whether he's a master, and most of all, I don't think he is a master. Oh, that's where he was getting. That's where he was getting at with that question. Yeah, I don't really see Issei as being a master of any kind. He's he doesn't seem quite competent enough for that, unless he's really good at putting up a facade, which that's also a possibility. Then I'm going now. Take care while I'm gone, Saber. 
シロも気をつけてあの校舎から結界がなくなったとしてもキャスターのマスターがいる以上は許しません。You too, Shiro. Even though the boundary field is gone from the school now, you cannot let your guard down as long as Caster's master is there. You have only one more c o m Saber sees me off. It seems Fujine has more things to take care of regarding the incident yesterday as she went to the hospital right after breakfast. The school doesn't look any different at even after such an incident. It's 7 30 in the morning, and the school gate is filled with students. The students are talking about what happened yesterday, creating a rather noisy scene. So, in the middle of it all, in front of the school gate is. Uh, of course. Tosuka, standing there like an angry devil. What are you angry about this time? I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling, but I can't sneak past her since she's in the middle of the road. Yo, good morning, Tosuka. You're, er you're early today. I stop and greet her. I think Issei's suspicious. Whoa. First thing she says is straight to the point. What do you mean by suspicious? I like this music. <laughs> it, it just, it, it just, uh, it's reminiscent of shenanigans. Caster's master. Caster's at the Ryudo Temple, and Issei is coming here from from the Ryudo Temple. There has to be a connection here. There's no connection. It might just be a coincidence. I try to defend Issei. That can't be true. Look, the mountain gate to the Ryodo Temple has been closed for the past few weeks. No outsider can come in, and Issei's like the only one who came out from there. If he's not suspicious, everyone would be a fair call. Hey now, you say nobody comes out, but don't monks usually stay at the temple? You idiot, how outdated is your knowledge? Monks can't live without collecting alms. If they could just shut themselves up in a temple in the mountains and live off of offerings, I'd join them myself. That means you'd have to shave your head. Tosca might be serious. If Issei was here, I'm sure he'd be yelling that she's an offering thief. She has to have those donations. t h e They go straight to the church, don't they? I'm interested in what's going on, or not the church, but the the temple. I'm interested in what's going on with the temple, but that's not the problem. Well, church, temple, same thing. I shouldn't worry more about our surroundings. We're at the school gate. Students coming to the school are all around us, and they are all paralyzed at the reckless speech of the school idol, Tosca Rin. What's with those eyes? What? Are you going to stand up for Issei? Huh, fine. If you're going to ignore the obvious, I'll go and solve things myself. But our school idol is the only one who does not realize the situation. Tosca, come over here. What? Are you going to run away? I won't run away, just come this way. I drag Tosca by her hand. Hey, e m i a k u n She can complain later. Just let me get away from here as fast as I can. <laughs> That's pretty embarrassing. The morning practice must be cancelled because of yesterday's incident, as the archery range is quiet. Phew. Good. We won't attract attention here. So the remaining problem is. <laughs> Tosca, who's glaring at me silently. I know, I know what you want to say, so don't make a face like that. I don't know what to do if you sulk. But she does half the time. I'm not sulking! Ugh. My mind is stunned at the lightning comeback. But I have to deal with her calmly. He says life is on the line. Knowing Tosuka, I bet she would do something reckless to test Issei. Probably just throw some of her jewels at him and either paralyze him or kill him, I guess. I don't 
Don't try to deceive me. Castor's base is at the Ryoto Temple, and Issei is coming to the school from the Ryoto Temple. Why are you ignoring that fact? Tosuka yells at me. She's right, but I just don't think it's Issei. What? Do you have any objection? But I'll die before Issei if I give her such an ambiguous answer. But I can't leave Tosuka like this, so I'll have to try to convince her somehow. Alright, you're saying Issei is suspicious no matter what, right? Right, you might not be able to tell, but the Ryoto Temple is really strange right now. It's true that Caster's base is there, but the distortion is too big, and there's too much being collected. Collected? You mean the magical energy sucked up from the town? Uh, no, it's nothing, so don't worry about it. You're more suspicious than Issei right now, Tosuka. Anyway, he's suspicious because he's coming here every day with a cool face from such a place. Yes, I always thought I needed to give him a kick, so this would be a perfect opportunity. So you're just using this to basically take your anger out on him. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's definitely not counterproductive in any way. Tosca's serious for some reason. I heard that they, I heard that they weren't on friendly terms, but I didn't know if it was this bad. Actually, what the hell did he say do to Tosca? I guess he's always kind of talking behind her back, so that's one thing. I'm a bit curious as to what could cause Tosca to be so drastic. No, now's not the time. Yeah, I agree that Issei's position is a suspicious one. Of course, you would be guilty too if you keep on defending him. Yeah, so leave Issei's case to me. I'll find out if he's a master or not. How are you going to do that? Whoa. It looks like she doesn't believe me at all. I'll have to prove myself. Trust me, I won't hold back on Issei just because he's my friend. Nor will I lie to you. First of all, this is a needless worry. There's no way Issei would do something so evil. But how do you know? The silent pressure continues. I bet Tosca's worried that I might go easy because Issei's my friend. Her doubt is only natural, so I just have to endure it. I have to get her to believe me. Alright, I'll leave Issei's case to you. Tosca. I sigh with relief. <sighs> but how will you figure it out? Do you know how to identify a master? Huh? Tosca asks about a fundamental deficiency in this proposal. Uh, well... Oh, don't tell me you're going to go up to him and ask, Hey, Issei, are you a master? Even though we're cooperating, I'll settle my case with you right here if you're going to do such a stupid thing. That's not at all as I was going to do. Ugh. She's mad. She's really mad. Hold on. It's alright. I have a way to figure out if he's a master or not without asking him. I'll settle this case today, so please don't do anything. I'll contact you once I figure it out. You're right. Cooperating is like this, after all. She starts walking away with a gesture that obviously tells me she's not content. I'll trust you, but don't do anything too stupid. If he says a master, doing anything stupid will only result in death. Saying so, Tosca goes back to the school building. I see her off. Huh? Could that be... I realize that she might have been worried about me. So how are we going to find out he's a master? This will be interesting to see. It's lunchtime, so I get to the student council room. Excuse me. I call out and open the door. Oh, you're going to eat lunch here today, Amiya? Issei is eating lunch by himself inside. Good, this is convenient. 
How is it? How did yesterday's incident turn out? I sit down at the table and start talking casually. Yeah, it's always chemicals, isn't it? Maybe it was one of those mysterious gas leaks. It's still unexplained. They're saying something about there being chemicals and then in the empty classroom on the first floor. That's the reason they came up with after searching through the school all night. Which means they really didn't have any good reason. <laughs> he must be unhappy and he starts biting on a tough looking carrot. But you were lucky. You skipped school after lunch and managed to avoid the disaster. Yeah, I guess you were rewarded for your good daily conduct. He now sips on his tea happily. Just like that. Man. This isn't the right atmosphere to interrogate him, so I'll wait and see for a while. Huh? Suddenly, I notice lunch break will be over in five minutes. Hmm? What's wrong, Ibya? Did you come up with something? No, but I remembered something. This isn't the time to be leisurely eating lunch. I quickly wrap up my lunchbox and turn to Issei. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. Please do not ask me for money. I don't have any even if you want to borrow some. Oh bullshit, you know you get donations. I get up from my <laughs> I get up from my chair. I don't have time. I take a deep breath. <sighs> Issei, don't ask questions, just take your top off. <laughs> I clearly, <laughs> I clearly state what needs to be done. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, you're going all the way, aren't you, Shiro? I told you to take your uniform off. Take your shirt off as well. It's not any good unless you're naked. <laughs> I, now I know why Shiro is uncomfortable with Saber sleeping in the same room. <laughs> I'll let guys sleep near me. What, what are you asking for? Are you insane? Is this a new way to question me? No. Do I have to do this now? Yup, this is urgent. Just take off your top. It'll be too late once school ends. I attack Issei. Sexually. This is sexual assault, mister! Whoa! Stop it! You fool! Are you really a from a family of warriors? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Alright. To summarize, I didn't find any command spell on Issei's body. I checked thoroughly, but I didn't find anything like a command spell. Good. This is really good. Yeah, for you, I would guess it is. I nod to myself. I feel so violated. What's so good? What's with you doing all this for nothing? Yeah, I, I think you would at least owe him an explanation after that. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Issei. I can't tell you what's going on, but I need to check something. It's done with now, so there's no longer any problem. I bow and apologize. Well, I guess if you do that, it's okay. Uh, okay, if you think you have done something bad, it's natural for you to apologize. I didn't have any problems with it, though. Issei goes silent with a serious face. But now, the search has gone back to square one. If Issei, the one at the Ryudo Temple, is innocent, there's nobody else here that might be Caster's master. Hey, Issei, is there something strange going on at the temple? Huh? What do you mean, something strange? I don't know, but is there anything that's different? Let's see, if you mean recently, there is an unfamiliar woman, but that's about it. My father and brother are there as always. Issei says so naturally. There is an unfamiliar woman? Could that be Castor? Well, I'm sure she could pretend to be human without a problem. Or would that be Caster's master? 
Maybe I should ask Issei about it. I'll... Ah, oh, fuck. Um... I think we're gonna go with option one, but we might as well save just in case. I guess I'll ask him. It'll be pointless, so I guess I won't ask. Um... Let's... Yeah, let's ask him. There's... There's no reason to go with the second one. I mean, it's not obviously not gonna be pointless. We learn more about Caster. Or Caster's Master, at least. I guess I'll ask him about it. She's not one to reveal herself to the ones living at the temple, but I might be able to get some clues. Issei, can you tell me about this unfamiliar woman? Is she from a foreign country? Or, her, or is her face covered with something like a turban? Yep, she's from the Middle East. What is that? We would kick out such a strange person. I don't know why you're asking, but she is a legitimate guest. My brother is happy that she might be an evil woman, but I strangely like her. I have only talked to her once, but she is a good person even if she may look evil. Oh, well, so asking the question was worth it. Seeing how you're praising a woman, did you fall in love with her? D d d don't say such a stupid thing, you fool. I admire a part of her that she doesn't notice herself. First of all, I cannot fall in love with the lover of the one I respect as my older brother, Soichi Soichiro. Issei suddenly stops and lowers his head. Uh, uh. I don't know if I, I don't know if he felt dizzy or what, but Issei falls on the table and does not move. Uh, what's wrong, Issei? Is it anemia or something? No, it's not that I feel bad. He raises himself real fast. I laugh thinking that he's acting like a coiled doll. What the fuck? Holy shit! What just happened? I've never gotten this ending before. This is a dead end. We asked the wrong question. We fucked up. What is this? What is this? Cast or possess Issei or something? Oh! Oh, God. Okay. Well, we're gonna load. We're gonna forget that that happened. <laughs> what was that? Maybe we should. Uh, it'll be pointless. Let's not, let's, let's not ask him. Um... Uh, <laughs> I thought that he asked her more about it. I guess, that, yeah, I guess not. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was a bad idea. No, it'll be dangerous to talk about this. Issei's living at the Ryoto Temple. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be dangerous, meaning you'll get, get fucking slashed by a, a fucking demon possessing him. Jesus Christ. If he, gets, if he gets suspicious of this strange woman, Issei might get curious and do something. And if that woman happens to be a master, Issei would be in danger. This is for this is it for today. I'll call it good since I found out Issei is unrelated to the Holy Grail War. Oh, by the way, Emiya, Shinji's sister wasn't at school today. Huh? Sakura is not at school today? Shinji was absent as well. They were both absent without notice today, so the teachers are wondering if something happened to their house or not. Very suspicious. I'm at a loss for words, being confronted with a problem I'd forgotten. Oh, lunch break is over. Let's go back to the classroom. Issei pushes me out of the student council room. All the, all the while. Thoughts of Sakura's absence and what Shinji might have done after losing Ryder twirl around in my head. Uh oh, what's going on? All oh, right, this is uh, I think this is uh from Shinji's perspective. It is it is a sound like hitting steel. <sighs> 
<sighs> he arrives at the place, breathing heavily. His footsteps are loud, and the rhythm is unsettled. He leaves the door open and staggers forward, as if pulled by his falling body. He looks around. The church is empty, with the morning service already over. The only light is the sunlight coming on. The only light is the sunlight coming in from overhead. The silence creates a solemn atmosphere, and the stopped space creates a clear silence. He is like a heresy in it all. No, that is not accurate. To say he arrived is not correct. He, his ragged breath, his unfocused eyes, his shaking limbs are like those of someone running away. He has come here to find shelter. Now, everything makes sense. His desperation is like that of prey being chased by a hound. It has been six days since the war started. You are the first one to come here. He straightens his body that's about to fall onto the ground. When did he appear? He looks with bloodshot eyes at the priest before the altar, and he says something. The priest frowns. He did not completely understand the boy, but it seems he is asking for help. He wants protection. A master that has lost his servant may ask for protection under the condition that he withdraw from the war. The place of retreat, the last sanctuary, is the church. And the master of this place is the priest called Kodamine Kire. Then you will withdraw from this war, boy? The boy reacts like fire to the quiet voice. Of course! Are you telling me to die? I can't kill anyone without a servant, so I don't want to be a master. I I'm a normal person. I'm a victim, right? It's unfair for anyone to kill someone like me. The priest does not answer, and only looks at the intruder, as if to, as if to peer within his skin, bones and meat. What? Do you have a problem? No, you were the first to withdraw this time, and you were the first user of this church since it was built. I shall treat you properly in the stead of my father who started this place. Huh? What? I'm the only one who retired? Damn, this is shameful. I don't know what my grandfather will say if he finds out about this. Man, this is all you guys' fault. It's so unfair that I got a piece of shit like Ryder. He strikes the ground in rage. The sound of the the sound of the punch echoes like a bell, and the priest smiles with great interest. So, Ryder was useless. Oh, what? <laughs> right. Man, she was only useful as a woman. Meaning she wasn't useful at all. Damn, she died so easily even though I did so much for her. Another servant would have been so much more useful. Oh, but I did well. I did as my grandfather told me, and everything was set. But they all got in my way. It was two against one. There was no way I could have won in a situation like that. Yeah, it wasn't my fault that I lost. It's just a different in quality of our servants, but they were so elated with their victory. And he crawls on the ground. He hits the floor, grieves his misfortune, and reflects his obstacles. But his resentful voice disappears quickly. Hatred of his level cannot break the silence in this church. Damn, 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 damn! He repeats his agony. In the midst of it, tap. The priest's footsteps echo through the room as if to break the frozen air. The priest slowly puts his hand on the boy's shoulder. So, this means you still have the will to fight. He looks down at the loser and says so with a kind voice. Huh? He cannot understand the priest's words. The priest in black has a friendly smile on his face. 
You were very fortunate. There is a servant who is available right now. The priest offers a new salvation, as if suppressing his joy. Uh oh. We know what that means. Shinji's not done. School's over. It must be because of what happened yesterday. The students are not allowed to stay at school for any reason. Yeah, I might not want to uh, talk about uh, talk to Issei about certain things either. He might slash your stomach. There's still time until the sun sets. I'll. God damn it. I'm worried about Sakura. I'll go to the Mato household. Um. Well. Since I've seen the anime, I know what he does, but uh, let's look at these other options here. Oh yeah, I have to contact Tosuka. Isn't that the same thing? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, because, well, spoilers, Tosuka's at around Shinji's house, so... Okay, um, I chose to uh, contact Tosuka earlier, guys, but I feel like that might have been not the wrong choice, but I think that we would have been better off with the first one. Just to, I, I kind of want to see what happens with this one. I don't know. If, if it doesn't work out, I'll just go with, um, I'll leave in what I recorded after choosing this uh, option here. But I want to go with this one, see if there's anything different that happens here. I'm worried about the absent Sakura. There's that thing with Shinji, so I'll go check up on her. Because I remember he does this in the anime, but, um, I don't know, like, if I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have chose this option. I, I, I would not have chose this option. But um, having seen it and no, and um, having known what happens in it, I kind of felt like this is what we have to choose instead of just saying like you know, oh, well, you have to contact Tosuka. I went back home once to leave my bag before I came back into town. Sakura's house is on the other side of the intersection, on the top side of the residential district. It's about as far as the it's about as far as the distance between the intersection and my place. I go up the hill that's unlike the Japanese-styled residential district. Then. Oh, there she is. Huh? In the distance. I see a familiar face in front of my destination. Sakura's house. Tosuka. I confirm one more time. Flashy red clothes. That alone captivates my eyes, and her lower half is black as if to emphasize the red color. She must be matching her black hair. The clothing suits the lively Tosuka. Something thumps. Shut up. <laughs> Something thumps twice this time. Damn, shut up. I'm busy right now, so be quiet. Thump, 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 thump. What's going on? Damn, it's not like a Taiko at a fair. Who the hell is it? It's me. I calmly answer. It's my heart that's making the noise. My calm heart suddenly started thumping like it's about to explode. It does not need to be said what caused it. Basically... Emiya Shiro has never seen Tosuka Rin in plain clothes. Uh, yeah, we have. We've seen her in plain clothes like a ton of different times. Like she's wearing, she's, she wears the same clothes every time, or most of the time. I can't imagine what I look like right now. First of all, I can't explain why I'm like this. I saw her plain clothes. I just saw her in something other than the school uniform. What the hell, man? What's up with me? I don't have any composure. First of all, Tosca is my ally. She trusts me and is cooperating with me. So I have to answer her trust. Oi, hey, Tosca. I call out to her. <laughs> Tosca sees me, gets surprised, and starts looking around. Tosca, what are you doing here? I go near her. <laughs> what the fuck? Huh? I have no time to resist. Tosuke grabs my arm and pushes me into cover. Ouch! I scraped my back! What are you doing, Tosuke? Be quiet! After that, I feel something outrageous on my chest. <laughs> I can tell you don't have any problems with this, Shiro. No. It's not- it's really soft. Is it now? <laughs> my brain is blown away. My heart that I calmed down earlier starts beating like a drum. I bet it's a, I bet it's in 16 beat, and I'm sure it'll turn uh, 360 times. Tosuka, hey, hey! Jeez, just be quiet. He'll hear us if we're loud. 
What do you mean? We'll be, we'll be seen by him. Go back a bit more. We can't hide like this. Tosuka pushes her body onto mine. It feels like a firm piece of meat is being pu <laughs> pushed into the cutting and in onto the cutting board to make it flat. Breasts! Tosuka, breasts! I think I'm saying a very dangerous thing, but I can't comprehend myself. The sensation is so great that my brain has turned into a sponge. <laughs> I told you to be quiet. Can you see him, Emiyakun? The strange guy that's standing in front of Sakura's house. Huh? My boiling brain stops instantly. Someone strange is standing in front of Sakura's house? There's, certain was, there's certainly someone there. Blonde? A foreigner? So. Yep, he's been watching Mato's house for about 30 minutes now. I don't think he's spying on it, but I don't like his eyes. I can't see his eyes from where I am. Tosuka, let's switch places. I want to take a look as well. Oh, we can't, you idiot! He'll see us if we go out now. Hey, he's coming. He's coming this way. We try to hide ourselves in this confined place. The footsteps approach. He goes down the hill without stopping. Gilgamesh! What was that? I think he's a normal human being. He feels real, and he's a legitimate human with form. But I still feel something weird. I don't know who he is, but our lives will come to an end if we follow him. He is our he's so ominous that I can declare so. I too. Is he the guy that was talking to Sakura before? Tosuka murmurs. With Sakura? Yeah, I guess she asked Sakura for directions, but she couldn't understand what he was saying. Wait! But why are you here? Tosuka jumps out of the back alley as fast as Lancer. Well, that was my question, but you took me and shoved me in here like a package or something. I explain exactly what happened to her. She must have understood as Tosca stops right there. It's good she stopped, but she's now glaring at me silently. Oh, that pisses me off. I also went into a panic because of the sudden event. But it's not fair if she's the only one who can make a face like that. She shouldn't have done it if she didn't want to. Damn, I feel stupid for getting all embarrassed about it. By the way, Tosuka, Issei has nothing to do with all this. I say so while turning away from her. Huh? What? You already found out? Yeah, I had to... I had to, um, get killed at once and get a dead end, but you know, yeah, I found out. Yeah, Issei's not a master. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't trust me. Huh? No, that's alright. You're not a person who can lie. I bet he says innocent if you say so. Tosuka speaks plainly. Damn, I lost. I sigh. Ugh. I feel stupid for getting angry if she replies like that, and most of all, I've cheered up hearing her say that. But how did you check? I didn't feel a master's presence from him, so you should only have been able to check by attacking him. Uh, well, we, we, we don't really talk about that. Kind of something we kept between the two of us, if you know what I mean. Huh? No, I only checked if he had a command spell or not. That's something he can't hide no matter how much magical energy or master's presence he hides, right? Oh, yeah. It's simple if you just look at his arm. Tosca nods in assent. But she tilts her head in wonder, as if she's thought of something strange. Hey, Emiyakun, how did you check for Issei's command spell? I just. <laughs> I just took his clothes off. I just took his clothes off. He fought back, but I took off his shirt by force. <laughs> Tosca's having uh, Yahweh fantasies now. Tosca freezes while looking at me. I have to 
add this to, your, to my Yali blog on DeviantArt later. <laughs> Tosca freezes while looking at me. How strange of her. What part of that is strange? Uh, every part of it, maybe? <laughs> the Mato household is quiet. Shinji isn't here, and Sakura doesn't seem to be here either. While I'm wondering what to do now... Oh, did you come here because you were worried about Sakura? Tosuka says so as if it's natural to ask. Tosuka, you know Mato Sakura? Well, I'm, a, I'm an acquaintance of hers. Bullshit. The students in the archery club are all in bad condition, so they've been transferred out. So they've been transferred to the hospital in Shinto. That's why Fujimura Sensei is running around, right? Then what about Sakura? Uh, Tosuka and Sakura have a little bit of a deeper relationship than she lets on, guys. A little, little, little bit of a spoiler there, I'm not really going to go into it. It's more gone into in the Heaven's Feel route, which is the last one, so... They don't really say much more about it here, as far as I know. She's sleeping in the hospital right now. Oh, I see. What's with that evil smile? Nothing. But yeah, you should be more worried about the person who comes to help you rather than contacting me. Oh, I think I'm beginning to understand you now. Tosca smiles meaningfully. It's really humiliating, but... Tosca, why do you know Sakura comes to my place? <laughs> oh, I, I found out when I went to visit the archery range. The archery club, whatever. I'm friends with the captain, Mitsuzuri-san, you know. With that, Tosuka starts walking up the hill. Tosuka, are you going home? Yeah, it's meaningless to stay here, and we need to restart the search for Caster. Let's share our ideas tomorrow. Tosuka says goodbye and casually leaves. Then... She looks at me seriously from a distance. Tosuka. Um, I have something I want to ask you. Fine. What? Um, this is a what if question. Um, what if someone is sent for adoption without any regards to their will? How do you think that person feels when they while they grow up? What does she mean with that? What does she mean with that question? A child that's adopted with no regard to their will, a life where their previous life is thrown away to be adopted by a complete stranger. People say children cannot choose their parents. Children who are raised by a stranger after they are born and how they might feel. Emiyakun. I get myself together. Why was I so sentimental? I don't even need to think about this question. Yeah. I don't think it's a big problem. If the place they're adopted to is a good place, I'm sure the person doesn't have any complaints. I'm sure there'll be some complaints if they're if it's a bad place. All children are like that. I see. You're right. Why am I asking such an obvious thing? And if you guys don't really understand where she what she meant by that question, then I can't really help you and I'm not really going to say anything else about it because you know hint hint nudge nudge Tosca waves goodbye and goes up the hill Tosca's house is in the opposite direction from mine well I have to get back to my house before it gets dark dinner ends before I realize it I came home, trained with Saber in the dojo, then Fujine came home and I made dinner. We ate it together and now it's already past 8. Could you be a famous swordsman in your country, Saber-chan? Shiro's been like a different person ever since you started teaching him. I'm surprised about that as well, but it seems Shiro has a different teacher, so it is not my doing. We're drinking the after-meal tea now. It's good that Fujine and Saber are getting along. 
I don't want to interrupt, so I'll quietly drink tea and rest my body that is tired from training with Saber. He has two teachers? Does that mean he's cheating on you? It seems he's not conscious of it, but I've decided to tolerate it since the result is good. Shiro should learn techniques that are suited to him. His body is already fit, so all that is left is to learn how to move his body properly. Oh, exactly, Saber-chan! Shiro has been training all this time, so his body is really fit! It's just that he wasn't motivated until now. Training his body. I see. I'm sure he would have trained his body having a dojo like that. Additionally, he had an opponent like you, so it is impossible for him to have no talent. She nods emotionally and takes a sip of tea. Then... No, it's been a long time since we get dead Kendo in there. That place wasn't used for Kendo before you came here. Fujine corrects Saber while biting on a rice cracker. It was not? Did you not use the Shunai at the dojo, Shiro? Saber looks at me with surprise. Huh? Uh, well, no, I haven't used it since my father died. Yeah, Shiro was fighting Kiritsugu-san every chance he got, but he stopped using the Shunai after Kiritsugu-san died. I'm so sad. Munch munch. Fujimura Tiger nipples on the rice cracker while resting her head on the table. I have a bad feeling about this. When Fujine acts like this, the conversation always goes to... Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Don't talk about me as a kid. It's embarrassing. Man, I wonder why. He was such a kendo boy back then, but he's just a bum now. I can't say he had talent for swords, but he was pretty good in archery. But he quit, you know. As I thought, Fujine, stop talking about the past. That's really, that's just really negative. I glare at her. Fujine sulks and eats the rice cracker. Phew. It seems she's done for now. Oh, Shiro's childhood, huh? But Saber's not done. <laughs> so why do you have to bring the conversation back up again, Saber? What? Do you want to hear about it? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. What the hell? Yes, I am curious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alright, then I shall tell you all about him. The morale of Fujimura Taiga's army goes up through the, through the reinforcements brought on by Saber. <laughs> I guess it can't be helped. I don't want to interrupt, so I guess I'll drink tea silently. I'll carry out my original intention of resting my body. He's really twisted now, but he was really cute when he was a kid. He never doubted anyone. He would do everything you asked him to do. I see. But he had a stubborn side to him, and he rarely changed his mind once he decided on something. I guess he was com the complete opposite of Kiritsugu-san in that regard. So Kiritsugu was the opposite of Shiro? Yep, Kiritsugu-san was the kind that accepted everything. He thought the good and evil were different for each person. He took, he took life real casually. But he would try to do something about it every time he saw someone in trouble. And Shiro would always be, and Shiro was always trying to emulate Kiritsugu-san. Shiro was more particular than Kiritsugu-san, so he went and beat up the boys, saying bad things are bad. You guys shouldn't do bad things, they're bad. Yeah, Shiro's been trying to be a superhero since then. Just like spider Maso, Fujine happily talks about boring things. And beside Fujine... Why do you try to be a superhero? Saber asks me a natural question. 
Well, it's hard to explain. I guess it's because I admire them. Admire? You admire superheroes? Hmm. I guess so. It's embarrassing if she says superhero outright. Why is that? Well, I realized at that moment. There's no reason. Imishiro has admired superheroes since he was a child. I kept on running so that I could be of help to people. So that I could help people who are sad. That does not change even now. But the reason behind it. Why did I try to be of help to people? I'll make your dream. That's the answer. That was the end of the person that meant everything to me. He died peacefully because of a simple statement I made. I wanted to protect that trust he had in me, even after he died, so that he would be able to rest in peace. But is that really the right reason? Shiro. Shiro. I hear my name and get a hold of myself. Yeah, oh, sorry. I'm going to my room now. Driven by an unknown uneasiness, I get up. I leave the living room as if running away from something. No, not as if. I did run away. It was a, it was a natural question. But I was scared something might be revealed if Saber stared at me like that. Why? What am I scared of? An uneasiness that I don't understand myself. A shapeless fear. An attacking nausea. I hurry to my room, bearing the headache. Fujine went home, saying she had work to do tonight. Saber is sleeping in the next room like yesterday. I can't sleep tonight either, so I stare into the darkness. It's not that I can't sleep because I'm conscious of Saber. Why do you try to be a superhero? It's because of those words. The question is still in my brain. She asked me why, and I answered because I admire them. It's obvious why I ran away right then. Because, if she had asked me why I admired them, I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer. No, I have an answer. But I'm, uns but I'm unconsciously restraining myself from ever saying it. The reason to be a superhero. Why ask that now? I was just desperate to be like Kiritsugu when I was a child. I admired superheroes because there was an ideal I could not make come true. That should not- that should be the cause. The true form of the ideal I have. No, the ideal I've had since 10 years ago. I glared into the sky, thinking that if I could save someone, it would be a lie unless I could save everything. But which is the- but which one is the lie? The ideal called a superhero that I've admired. The older I get, the more Emi Ashiro strays from the ideal. The ignorant child that did not know of his limits has learned of limits through knowledge. What cannot be saved cannot be saved. A miracle is something too big for humans. But I believed I could be like Hiritsuku when I grew older. But all I obtained was the wisdom to conclude that an ideal is just an ideal. All I can do are remedial measures. Even though I've been attacked with the fact that it's meaningless, I've continued to do whatever I could. Thinking that it's good enough for if one person is saved by my actions. Even though my objective is to save as many lives as I can, I've lost a lot of things on the way but I continued so that I wouldn't lose. Even if I'm battered by reality, I can keep standing if I don't accept loss, even if I'm only bluffing. That ideal. The ideal not to hurt anyone is beautiful. I'll make your dream. Yeah, I just thought that. If nobody was going to do it, I would inherit his dream myself. That's why I must become a superhero. I have to succeed Kiritsugu and protect what he admired. If I can create no victims, and if everyone can keep living peacefully, how good would it... Such a thing does not exist anywhere in this world. Shut up. You never know until you try. I desperately reject the words that come to my mind. He told me to drown in my ideals and die. Those words are ominous, as if correctly predicting Imiyashiro's end.